Um, can I encourage you, another way that you can keep your hands busy is to grab a phone or a device or a physical uh, book Bible, um, so I'd encourage you to follow along with what I will be sharing today. Far more chance you're going to uh, hear something from God if in the Bible than from me. Um, and while I plan on sticking to what the Bible says, it's always good for you to check it out, check I'm not making it up. Um, so can I start um, by asking you, what is wrong with the picture behind me. Um, I will in a moment give you an opportunity to shout it out and look all clever, but for a moment, if you just have a think about what's wrong with it. Um, answers I had in the first, the, 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 the 8.45 gathering uh, today, which are not the correct answer, um, it, is a, it is a left-hand drive car instead of a right-hand drive car. Um, I don't feel it's my place to decree that that is wrong. Um, it is different, but it's not wrong. Um, it is also, clearly this is a picture taken in France, because if you can look cl closely enough at the writing on the little Christmas tree thing, it is written in French. That is also not wrong, it's just different. Um, so that's not what I'm going for, but what is wrong with this picture? Does anyone think they know what is wrong with this picture? You can do a little nod or a little... Guy Parkin thinks he knows what's wrong with this There's picture. No on the magic tree. There's no string on the magic tree. Uh, that, I mean, that is sort of related to what's wrong with this picture. But uh, yeah, the, the, little, the little Christmas tree that's just floating around right there. No string attached to it. Uh, yes, Zach. Um, uh, yeah, so it's clearly not taken this time of year because it's very sunny and looks very nice. Miri, do you think you know? Go on. There is no rear view mirror. Guy, you are so close. There's no string, but you've got to ask, what would it even be attached to if there were string? That's right. I have very cleverly taken out the rear view mirror from this picture. Um, it is just a, a picture of, 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 of someone driving, and they're looking forward, and they can see everything that's ahead of them, although they're slightly obscured by the little Christmas tree, which is hanging far too low. Um, they, they can see everything that's going ahead of them, but they have no thought for what is behind them because this is missing. And at this time of year, when we are looking back and we're looking forwards, we're looking back over all the things that 2021 held. I don't know if you wrote a 2021 year in review social media post. I know a lot of people have of highlights or things that have happened or good things or tricky things or sort of what's been going on in my life kind of thing. Um, and a lot of people have been sharing their aspirations or their hopes or their dreams or their resolutions for 2022. What is the right balance of looking back and looking forwards? Well, I want to suggest it is fairly similar to when driving a car, which is that our life is meant to be lived looking forwards. We are to be focused on where God is taking us rather than spending our whole life dwelling in the past. If we are always looking forwards, though, and never thinking about what comes in, in, in the past, if we take out the rearview mirror of our life, then I don't think that's very healthy. You might say to me, but Dave... Paul, one of the leaders of the early church in the New Testament, he says in Philippians 3, he says, one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining towards what's ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. Surely everything should be pointing forwards. Well, this is just a few verses after Paul has talked about where he came from, talked about the life that he used to have, talked about the credentials he used to put. He, he, he's, he's not forgetting as in disregarding everything that's gone before. He's saying, I'm not going to be defined by the past. To always ever look forwards and never consider what's gone before. We're going to miss things. We're not going to learn from our mistakes. We're not going to learn from our successes. We're not going to learn from the things that God has been doing that maybe we've missed. We should be reflective people. We should look backwards once in a while. But I also want to suggest that this is very unhealthy, that if our whole life is a rearview mirror, that we're just spending all of our time dwelling over and going over conversations or things that have happened, then that's not going to be healthy either. Our life should be like a car driven forwards. But in order to do that well, we're going to need to look backwards once in a while. Look back to look forward. That is what we are doing. That's what I want to encourage us to do today. So I want you to think about, as I'm speaking, and as we're spending time together today, what last year was like. <clears throat> think about the specifics and the realities for you. And also what 2022 holds or could hold. And what I want us to look at today is, in the Bible, is Psalm 115. 
Psalm 115 was, uh, verse one, was our verse for the year last year, 2021. We kicked off the year and said this year, we're gonna come back again and again and again to this verse. Psalm 115, verse one, that says, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. That was our verse for the year last year. And I want us to look at the whole of Psalm 115. And I want us to think about ways in which God was glorified, that he received the glory, and ways in 2022 that he might receive the glory. But notice this verse kind of hints, it implies that it's possible for the glory to go elsewhere. Not to us, Lord, not to us. Why would he say that unless this person who wrote this psalm knew that sometimes we can be guilty of trying to keep the glory for ourselves, or we can do things that get in the way of the glory, the credit, the honor going to God. We can make it about ourselves. And the corrective we need is not to us, not to us, but to your name be the glory. So I want to read this psalm, and then we're gonna think about three ways in which God can be glorified, and then for each one we're gonna think, but how is it that we can try and pull focus away from God? How is it that we can try and pull it, maybe not meaning, meaning to, but how can we do that nonetheless? So let's read Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold, made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people, Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. It's not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. A reminder at the end of this psalm that it's not those who are dead, it's those of us who are alive, who with our lives, with our worship, should give praise, should give glory to God. That's our job. That's what we are to do. And so as we examine three things in this psalm that we see where God can be glorified, we need to ask, how can we in 2022 bring glory to God in these ways, more even than we did in 2021? And the first is this. The first is this. God's own actions bring him glory. Verse three says, our God is in heaven, he does whatever pleases him. Now that phrase, he does whatever pleases him, if we use it of another person, it can actually sound quite negative. Oh, he does whatever he fancies, he does whatever he pleases. She does whatever she likes with no thought for anyone else. That kind of sentiment towards another human being is sort of, they're unaccountable, they don't play by the rules, they, don't do, they, they, they do whatever they like without thinking what, how it might impact other people. It's not a positive character trait that a person could have. That's not what this verse means about God. Our God is in heaven, he does whatever pleases him. This is in contrast to those idols that this psalm talks about. Those idols that have been made by human hands, these carved statues would have been what they were like in the day, made of wood or stone or bronze or gold. And all of these things, we, we have a list of things that they have, but things that they can't do. They have a nose, but they can't smell. They have hands, but they can't feel. They have feet, but they can't walk around. In other words, they may look the part, but they're useless. They can't do anything. And in contrast to, to that, our God in heaven, he does. He actually does 
things. He acts, he moves, he works. God is not just a a distant figure in the sky who maybe we'll interact with when we die. He is at work and he is moving and he is doing things today. Even when we don't see it, you're moving. Even when we don't feel it, you're working. Those are words that we've just sung. God, in contrast to all of these other idols, he does things and it brings glory to his name. But he doesn't just do any things. He does the things that please him. He does the things that he knows are right and good. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your great love and faithfulness. It is the God of love and the God of faithfulness who does whatever he pleases, which means the things that he does are always faithful and are always in love. Doesn't always feel like that can sometimes look around and go, well, why this then, or why not that then? We can't always understand and see it. But one of the things that we can do that brings glory to God is we can trust that what he does is good. We can believe in his intentions even when we don't understand them. We can believe and trust in his goodness even when we don't understand it or we don't see it. The, if we were trying to take the glory to ourselves, we would be placing, placing the onus on us to achieve everything, to do everything, to make it all about us. Glory to God means saying, God, you are at work, and I'm going to join you where you are instead of expecting you to join me where I am. That's the first one. God is at work, and when we join with him, that honors him. That brings him glory instead of keeping it for ourselves. The second thing is that our trust and faith in him bring him glory. A couple of verses later, we read, All you Israelites, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. talks about these three groups, Israelites, house of Aaron, and all who fear God. The Israelites are all the people of God, all the people of Israel. The house of Aaron is the sort of the, the, the priestly house within that, within, within Israel. And finally, all those who fear him, even those who aren't part of the, 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 the people group of Israel, but who have joined in worship of God and in trust towards God, they're part of it as well. For me, that, that includes me. I'm part of those other peoples who have joined in worship of the God of Israel and the God of the Bible and the God revealed in Jesus. This is casting the net wide. Everyone can trust in him. And this psalm that starts off and is all about God being glorified speaks of our trust in God as part of that. We can trust in this psalm, either in the God who is in heaven and does what he pleases, or we can trust in these mute and motionless and blind idols, these statues. Now, in our day and age, in our world, we don't tend to have those sorts of idols, those statues that we've made and crafted, and then we bow down and worship, thinking that it's some kind of lucky talisman that'll keep us safe. No, we don't, we don't have that. We're more evolved than that, which means we have more evolved idols. We have more complex idols. It's not that we've got rid of them. It's just that we've changed them. They look a bit different. We have the idols of our own success. We trust that. I've been successful up till now. I've risen up the ranks up till now, so I can trust that I'll continue going. No, not, not, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. I need to trust in you, not in my own success. We trust in the health of our bank balance and the wealth that we've accumulated. All of these are good things, but they're not God things. Our wealth is fickle. Our wealth is ultimately something that we've made, we've created, and we might think that it gives us security, but it doesn't. It doesn't buy us an extra minute of life doesn't buy us security, doesn't ultimately buy us joy. might buy us some fleeting happiness once in a while, but that's not worth building our life upon. All of these things that we can trust in, that we can love in ways that we should trust and love God. 
See, when we choose to trust in God, it brings glory to him because what it's saying is, we're saying, it's not about me, it's not about what I can achieve, it's not about what I can do, it's gonna be all about you and I'm gonna throw myself on you for the situations you're facing, the good ones and the bad ones, the easy ones and the tough ones. Trust in God brings glory to him and it will ultimately bring peace to you. Or we can choose to trust in all of these other things which will not bring glory to God because we're saying, I don't need you, God. I've got this thing instead and it won't bring you peace because it won't be as strong as God and it won't be as solid as God. So how can we bring glory to God more next year than we did last year? We can look for him being at work more and choose to get involved because God does things and it brings him glory and we can choose to trust him more. That's not an easy thing. It's an easy thing to say. It's a difficult thing to do. But could you set your sails for this next year to say, I'm going to build a rhythm and a habit of trusting God. Whatever happens, I'm going to bring it to him first. Whatever I'm facing, I'm going to choose him first. And finally, the final way in this psalm that we see God being glorified is this. God's blessing brings him glory. Because after telling those three groups, Israel, the Israelites, the house of Aaron, and all those who fear the Lord, that we should trust him, that they should trust him, God then says, in the very next verse, in verse 12, he will bless his people, Israel, he will bless the house of Aaron, and he will bless those who fear the Lord. Those very same people who have been called to trust in him are then promised blessing. And I don't think that's a quid pro quo kind of thing. If you trust me, I'll bless you. It's not sort of you can earn your your heavenly spiritual rewards by your diligence and faith. It's just God's statement that he will bless his people. In some ways, regardless of our faithfulness, regardless of what we will do. And then he says, pronounces this blessing the psalmist does in verse 14 and 15. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. When we are blessed by God and we receive and we enjoy those blessings, whether they be financial, whether they be health, whether they be relationships or family, whether they be for us as a church, this building that God has blessed us with, that God has has enabled us to to flourish with. Whatever it is, when we take those blessings and we receive those blessings and we recognize where they've come from and we're grateful for that, it brings glory to God. When we receive those blessings and then we look at them and go, yep, I did that. It's all about me. I've been given health by God. No, nope, I made myself fit and healthy. I've been, we've been blessed by, as a church family, with this, with this building. We look at it and go, yeah, we did that. That's all our work. God blesses us, and when we turn it to thankfulness, it brings greater glory to his name. When we claim those blessings as if they are from us, not to us, it brings less glory to God's name because we make it more about ourselves and less about him. But friends, God does want to bless us. God is a God. He's not a miserly, distant, old, mean man in the sky who is wanting to withhold things from his children. He wants to bless us. He wants to bless you in spiritual ways, in material ways. He loves to do that. And he loves it when in response to that, we recognize it's from him. We give the credit to him. We say to ourselves, to our families, to others, look what God has done. He has done great things. He has done great things as a sentence brings more glory to God than I have got great things. They're two sides of the same coin. When he does great things, we receive great things. But when we focus on us having them more than him giving them, we've missed an opportunity We've missed an opportunity to deepen in our faith. We've missed an opportunity to tell a story of his goodness. When God blesses us, 
it can bring him so, so much glory. And he loves to do it. So I want to encourage you, as we look back, to look forward. Those three things. God's activity brings him glory. Where has God been at work? And have you chosen to pursue that and go there? One of the things that we've seen as a church family since we opened this building in September is a huge influx and multiplication of the ministry, particularly to the youngest children. Our toddler group, which meets here, we started off in the, in the foyer bit. Then we had to open it up and come to about here. Then we came to here. It won't be long before we're in the whole room. We've got more people wanting to come than we can currently cater for. God is blessing us with that. God is at work there. And we as a church family need to say, well, if that's where God is moving, will we get involved? And I know not everyone can come here on a Friday morning, but can we pray for it? Could you be here on a Friday morning? Either to interact with parents or to help with some of the practical things that are going on. Because when God is at work somewhere, which he is, he always is, then when we choose to get involved there and choose to partner with him there, we can expect to be part of something that he's blessing and we can expect to enjoy it and we can expect that glory will be brought to him because we're saying, God, I'm going to get on board in your plans instead of only ever asking you to get on board with mine. So where has God been at work? Where is God at work? And where could you join him in his work in this next year? The second thing about trusting God. What's your level of trust been in God during 2021? A little bit shaky? Completely gone? Absolutely rock solid? For me, I can honestly say at various points, pretty much all of the above. At no point has it absolutely completely gone, but it's been pretty flimsy a few times. As I've looked at things and gone, why or how or what even is the point? I want my level of faith and trust in God during this next year to be greater than it was in the past. And that means coming back to him more regularly. It means choosing to pursue him first instead of second after I've tried the other options. And finally, where is God blessing you? And how often do you thank him for that? And how often do you receive those things with gratitude? And how often do you receive those things with pride? So I want to encourage you, not to you, not to you, not to me, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name, to God's name, be the glory. In 2021, I believe that God was brought glory through your life, through our life, through this church, through what he was doing, through our trust in him. I believe that there could be greater glory brought to God's name in 2022, even though it's not going to be our verse for the year next year. Because we're going to have another one, which we'll talk about next week. But it's a verse for life. It's in the Bible. We're not scratching it off because we've done it. We're going to continue pursuing God's glory instead of our own. So I want to encourage you to maybe think through your last year and your coming year through that lens. For now, let me pray. And I invite the band to come back up as I do. Lord God, thank you that you are the God of our past, of our present, and of our future. Thank you that you have always been on the throne, that you are on the throne, and that you will be on the throne. Thank you that you are at work. Thank you that we can trust that what you do is good. And that what you allow, you allow for good reasons. And Lord, we want to thank you for all of the blessings you have given us. All of the good things you have poured out on us. Help us to receive them with gratitude. Help us to use them for you. Lord, guide us. Help us to reflect well, to look in that rearview mirror just long enough to know better handle, to know how better to handle the road ahead. And then lead us on into all that you have for us. In Jesus' powerful and gentle and magnificent and precious name. Amen.